<laughs> Good evening. This is the October 15th, 2020 meeting of the Millburn Shore Hills Business Organization Incorporated Special Improvement District Board of Trustees. Notice of the time, date, location, and agenda of this meeting to the extent known was provided at least 48 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting in the following manner pursuant to provisions of NJSA 10.406. The Public Meetings Act. By posting such notice in Town Hall and the Township website, by notification to newspapers on October 2nd, 2020, and by providing notice to the Township Clerk. And I'll stand for this week. Tracy, to do a roll call? Um, I will. It is very hard to hear from there, and there is a buzzing, I just want to mention. Um, but I will do the roll call. Jumana Culligan? Here. Tracy Levine? Me. Here. Mayor Lieberberg? Here. Andrew Morgan? Here. Nadej Nicole? Here. Michael Palavecchio? Here. And Stephen Weiner. Here. Okay, and do I include the non voting members in the roll call? I think you can just, yeah, note our presence. Okay. Is Richard Wasserman present? Absolutely present. And Alex is present. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the minutes of the September 10th, 2020 Board of Trustees meeting were circulated. Did anybody? I uh, hope everyone, everyone had a chance to read them. Does anybody have any comments or changes to those? Okay. Um, and I have a motion to uh, accept those minutes. Yeah, I, I move to accept the minutes. I second. Uh, can we just take a voice vote? All in favor? Yes. Yes. Say aye. yes. Aye. 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 Public comment section of the meeting. Um, everybody will have so just uh, so I'm clear. We have people here in the audience. We also have people remotely yes. available. Okay. Yes. Normally, I'd say when invited to speak, please come to the lectern or come to whatever the remote version of the lectern is. Clearly state your name and address, and speak clearly so that your comments can be understood by all and properly recorded. Uh, everyone who uh, comes to speak will have three minutes to make their comments. Uh, again, this is this can be done either live or um, by remote means. Do we have anybody uh, who would wish to speak? So for those that are participating via Zoom, if you would like to speak during the public comment, please raise your hand and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll announce you in. Three minutes. Hello. Do you hear me? This is Jeffrey Feld, 11 Alexander Lane, Short Hills, New Jersey. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mr. Um, prior to the meeting, I sent two letters. One was like a heads up of various documents you should be reviewing before the meeting. Then I sent a letter um, yesterday uh, with about nine questions. I like those questions answered. I don't think I need to read them into the record uh, to save time. I sent them. Um, one thing I would like to know is that when I sent my second letter, I sent it to um, both the clerk and to an email address. And it seems that the original agenda that was posted on the website had um, Gotti's address. And that then when you go back on the agenda now, it has a, another address, and I just want to confirm that I'm not crazy that that did happen. In addition, my heads up questions are a lot of the actions that you're taking 
you're taking a very big risk of loss. There was litigation going on. Um, today, the local finance board sat and considered in closed session a conflict issue. Um, yesterday, a public notice appeared regarding the county of Middlesex Board of Freeholders, where in their public notice, they discuss when you have a second reading hearing on ordinances and you raise questions, those elected officials will answer the questions before they vote. That's an issue that we have that's in litigation regarding the creation of the city. Questions were asked, but the local governing body never answered those questions. So there's gonna be questions and now you have Middlesex County agreeing with my and others analysis. Um, in addition, since I wrote the letter, an opinion came out today, a published opinion by Judge, Judge Sabatino. His panel, Judge Sabatino wrote it, it's a published opinion. And when you're an attorney, there are certain judges who write, when they write a published opinion, you read them. Judge Sabatino is one of those. And the importance of his opinion is that he goes through legislative history and legislative analysis, analysis that was not done when the ordinance was enacted by your um, municipal council. So I'm saying a lot of things that you're doing, especially the, what occurred last Tuesday night, um, where a line item was added to the budget after the fact, to so just to have funding. The public really did, had no idea what that line item was. But during the meeting, that line item ended up being where a majority of the council tried to approve your budget. And people had questions of whether they can do it in the context of adding a line item to the, the town's budget and whether they gave sufficient notice and an opportunity to be heard by the public on the budget. And there was questions where we are based on your bylaws, how that issue ever got in front of the city council as to the calendar year 2020 budget. That's something that I call the non-elected officials, you need to protect yourselves. Because as of last meeting, you do not have counsel. That's something that you should be looking at because at the end of the Tuesday night's meeting at the city council, um, council person Eglo, Eglo asked specifically for an opinion from the city municipal attorney as to what- I'm just gonna ask that you wrap up in 30 seconds if you can, please, sir. All right, I'm just saying to be very careful. Case law is coming out about non-dischargeability of debt that ties into monies are misappropriated from or used improperly from municipalities. If you have my questions, please be careful. That's all I'm saying to you, I'm creating a record. Mr. Fowl, this is Tracy Levine, the secretary for the CID. I just wanna mention that we did receive your heads up memorandum and that was distributed to the board. I did not see or was aware of this second letter that you're referencing. So we will check on that to be sure that everyone receives that. And yes, there is now an email address set up that is mshsid at milburntownship.org. And we will include that in the minutes that we publish. But I just wanted to mention that there is definitely some confusion about these different communications that you sent. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Footer. You, you, it's... Yes, because I can't hear you. I can hear most of the people who I think are remote well, but you sitting up at the, uh, the table there, except for when Alex spoke, everybody else, I can't, it, it's almost impossible to hear a word. How about now? That is much better. All right, you have three minutes to speak. That's all I wanted to say. Oh, all right, so that was a public service announcement. Thank you, that helps. You're welcome. If nobody minds, maybe it, since we have some distance, if, uh, if everybody's comfortable pulling down the mask while speaking into the microphone, uh, I don't want to create a problem, but 
do, we do have some distance and just to make sure everything's properly heard and recorded. I, I, I think Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Uh, that is it from the from the Okay. Okay. Just give us your name. And uh, Vicki Powell, uh, Shala, 358C Milburn Avenue. I just have a couple questions. You could very well be answering them tonight. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to touch base, wanted to know website, social media. Are we thinking about that anytime soon? Yes. I mean, we are getting into the holiday season. I don't know if you're all aware. We, uh, Peter's uh, is closed from Milburn. He closed his business today and is reimagining and reinventing himself. So I just, you know, we need to start getting on on ball with that. And also <clears throat> a little bit more communication about the meetings. Um, I know, I know, I saw Tracy put post in Happy Milburn and a couple other places about, you know, uh, give your email if you want to be noticed and all that stuff, but you got to start getting it out there. I don't think people realize that you guys are meeting. And if you want to get a buy-in, I think you need to get everyone involved. Maybe even go visit some merchants, um, you know, I mean, that's just my opinion. I, I see it. I, you know, I talk to merchants, they're excited. Um, but you got to get everyone involved and no one, you know, not really a lot of people realize, well, this was on and, you know, so I think you need to start communicating, send some emails out. Um, but also website, social media, very important. There's not one web, there's no, there's no directory that's naming anybody in Milburn Short Hills business wise. The Chamber of Thomas, unless you belong to the chamber, you don't know what the business. So my business is not named anywhere. So if any, somebody wants to look for a restaurant in town or somebody wants to know where can I buy a gift, where can I get a book, there's nothing in town that says where they, where they can go. So I think that's very important to get on board with that. But good luck. You guys are doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you. And, Thank and, you. Know, and really, I, I don't want to get involved in all back and forth, but I, I agree with you. And we are at Seedling and yeah, trying to get everything in place. No, I know. Yeah. And we're, we are working on it. And hopefully you'll hear throughout the meeting some of the things we have planned for the next month. We only have one more member of the public sitting in the back. I don't know if you wanted to speak. Mr. Diane. Okay. All right. So we'll move on from public comments. Um, getting on to the rest of the agenda, uh, first topic, the accounting of 2020 requested funds. Um, Stephen, if I could point to you to just talk about that a little bit, what that means. Sure. Well, yeah, of course. Um, thanks, Michael. So as I understand, the town committee, township committee did approve the allocation of funds. This is to cover for the rest of this year. And the intention was to create kind of categories of expenses, given that we're still a seedling and we're still getting our uh, sea legs here. So just generally the buckets are a marketing coordinator, social media person, and we're going to talk about uh, the, the person um, and hopefully approve her uh, later in this meeting. General marketing budget or, or allocation of money, and that is also website development, online marketing, social media, so clearly um, on target for this year, just the next few months. Also, market research, that is meeting with, with, um, with businesses in town, soliciting feedback. We have a small dollar amount um, allocated, really to thinking we're going to do some online um, surveys, but we really did want to do also one-to-one -one meetings. And, and uh, I like to say lunch and learns, but I, with COVID, I'm not sure if we can even do that. Um, and then also fall programming and events. So we clearly have a lot of holidays coming up, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Know, holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, etc. So um, we also have those on, on, on target and bucketed for um, some expense allocation. So the, the total expense through year end was not going to exceed $20,000. And that was, I believe, approved at the Township Committee last week uh, or, yeah, on Tuesday. So um, that, that's basically it. it it's, it's just an allocation of funds for the fall that's what where we anticipate needing expenses. We don't have any more specificity around it because we just don't know yet, honestly, in terms of what it'll cost to start the website or, or launch social media. And, uh, does anybody have any questions or comments about that? I just wanted to say one thing. Since we started, um, 
our first meeting in the third quarter of the year, uh, as opposed to the beginning of the year, we haven't had a chance to assemble a, an annual budget yet, haven't gone through some of the uh, requirements for doing a budget. So this is a late year uh, allocation of funds to get us off the ground to get some of those initiatives uh, that Vicki talked about uh, underway, that others have talked about in the community, and that we all know what we need to do. So this is uh, how we get things started. Anybody have any other questions on the, uh, the, this fund? If not, that goes right into the next item. Now that we have funds, we need to put them somewhere in the checking account. Uh, what we've circulated is a resolution authorizing Stephen Weiner to, to uh, open a checking account in the name of uh, the corporation. Uh, so uh, if anybody wants me to read that out loud, I can do that. Uh, whereas the Milburn Short Hills Business Organization Incorporated, which we're calling the corporation, was created by township ordinance and is organized exclusively for charitable, educational, religious, or scientific purposes within the meaning Section 501c3 of the uh, Internal Revenue Code. And whereas the corporation was formed to fulfill and promote the mission of the Milburn Special Improvement District, and whereas the corporation shall be governed by a board of trustees, which shall have the duty and responsibility to oversee and implement the powers of the corporation. Whereas of the voting members of the board of trustees, there shall be a treasurer who shall have charge of and be responsible for all funds, securities, receipts, and disbursements of the corporation and shall deposit or cause to be deposited in the name of the corporation, all monies and other valuables in such bank or other depositories as the Board of Trustees may select from time to time. Whereas Stephen Weiner has been elected by the Board of Trustees to serve as treasurer of the corporation for 2020 slash 2021. Whereas the Milburn Township Committee has appropriated $20,000 for the corporation and allocated that sum to fund initial costs and expenses. Now therefore be it resolved Milburn Short Hills Business Organization Incorporated. The Board of Trustees hereby authorizes Stephen Weiner to open a checking account in the name of the corporation with the investor, uh, investor's bank. So I can have a motion to uh, adopt that resolution. Second. And do we have a second? I second. Okay, can we have a roll call on that, Tracy? Yeah, Jumana. Yes. Myself, yes. Mayor Lieberberg. Yes. Andrew. Yes. Nadej. Yes. Michael. Yes. And Stephen. Yes. Thank you. Uh, administrative updates. So we have uh, the first one. This is called SID related updates. What I was hoping to do is uh, one of the um, people who brought comments talked about litigation. And um, although this corporation, this board of trustees isn't a party to that, it's certainly uh, the litigation is to a small extent, I understand it bears on, on us. So I was hoping Alice could at least, without uh, going into anything that he can't because it's litigation, just give us uh, an overview or some explanation of what actually has been filed. Uh, sure. <clears throat> so the, um, the filing by Bear Properties uh, against the township uh, and members of the township committee uh, relates to the formation of the SID and, um, you know, addresses a, a, a few varying um, Counts, uh, one of which deals with the Open Public Meetings Act, um, and 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 certainly, uh, I think it just needs to be clear that, and this was stated by the township attorney at the meeting on October uh, October sixth, that um, you know the the SID Board of Trustees is operating uh, under the uh, the pretense that 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 ordinance was passed uh, by the township committee, and that. That litigation um, at this point uh, has not um, required a, a discontinuation of this board to act, and so it's just just want to make it clear that it's dealing with the formation and the and the passage of that SID ordinance, 
Um, and, and certainly that the outcome of that may have bearing on this board and its ability to operate, but uh, not at this time. questions for Alex on that um, the only thing I would say is uh, this is not the um, I'm an attorney but I play one on TV kind of routine but I'm an attorney by practice I'm certainly not the attorney for this board and I certainly won't start dishing out uh, legal advice for this board um, like this the one thing I would caution everybody is because it's litigation is probably 95 percent of the things Alex can't answer if we have specific questions but if anybody has any uh, basic questions for him about the nature of this litigation, or I, I think he's been pretty clear that it, while it impacts um, addressing the formation of the ordinance and the adoption of the ordinance, it doesn't, at this point, at least impact our ability to operate unless and until the judge decides not to. So if anybody had any questions, please ask. Just one quick question. So I know it's litigation, but is there any indication of timeline in terms of how long the matter will, or it can be dragged out for, I mean. Uh, I mean, I think that 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 there's so many factors that play into that, uh, Stephen, and, and one of those is, um, you know, the caseload of the courts, um, us being in Essex County um, and those various things. And there's also an ethics complaint attached to that as well um, with one of the committee members. So. Uh, it, it could be some time, but there is no clear indication. Thank you. No other questions? Uh, we can move on to subsection two, volunteer interest forms. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, oh, sorry. Sure. Um, I, I just wanted to provide um, two other just brief uh, administrative updates to the, uh, yeah. to, to the Board of Trustees. Uh, one is that um, the um, the GIF uh, in uh, the the Morris County GIF has um, accepted the SID um, application for uh, insurance. Um, I will I will note that um, you know that will uh, be an expense to this to this board of a thousand dollars. And I also wanted to indicate that um, we have applied um, and received uh, the employee identification number for the uh, for the organization. And I've provided that to uh, Stephen as the treasurer. And just uh, for clarification, Morris County GIF is joint insurance fund. Correct. Do you have anything else? No, that's all. Thank you. Sorry to cut you off before. Thank you. Um, volunteer interest forms. I'm not sure who's speaking on. I can talk to that, Michael. Thanks, Tracy. Okay. So we, following our last meeting, we had published a volunteer interest form, as was discussed at the meeting. Um, we've posted it publicly. We will be talking a little bit later to Vicki's good questions about marketing website, et cetera. Um, in the meantime, there is a Milburn Short Hills SID Board of Trustees page on the township website. And that's where we've been posting a bunch of updates, um, including the link to this form. And we also reached out to all of the people that had initially um, expressed interest in serving on the Board of Trustees. So we have received completed forms from 14 people who were interested in um, being involved with the SID across a whole variety of areas that were noted. Um, I will say a little bit later in the meeting in terms of the bylaws and in some other um, agenda items, we're gonna talk through clarifying to some extent the difference between board committees versus possible other subcommittees and also a potential advisory council. So once we clarify that um, at this meeting tonight, um, we had already notified all the volunteers that we received their interest and that we would be following up and we will follow up after the meeting tonight on more specific next steps. But we really appreciate that people are really interested in being involved from across different roles 
different parts of the community. And we encourage anybody who believes in the mission and wants to be involved to join us as volunteers. Any questions from anybody? And I know the committee, um, yeah, let me know of any questions or from anybody else. Thanks, Tracy. Does anybody have any questions, comments about that? I would just like to say what the five committees are, just in, uh, in case people didn't uh, tune into the last meeting. That, that's okay? Absolutely. Yeah. So we have bylaws, recruitment, human capital, short-term planning, marketing, public relations, and business advocacy and development. Thanks. other questions on that or comments uh, we'll go to board committee updates and jump right into bylaws Tracy um, we have started to circulate a draft of red lined or blue line generally edited and crossed out uh, bylaws for everybody to take a look at and my comments and a lot of you have provided comments and additional questions and recommendations. Um, I think what the best way is to go through this without going through the entire bylaws. Is there anything, any particular uh, area anybody wants to start with? Tracy? And Michael, can I just clarify one thing for everyone's knowledge, that we are not um, voting or amending anything tonight. This is a discussion about potential amendments to the bylaws. I just want to make sure everybody was clear on that and so that there weren't any rumors started. Oh, and that's and that's correct because we have to go through a process. We have to uh, really go through the editing process and then submit it to the township committee for their approval before we can uh, adopt it as our own. So um, if there was any particular part that uh, we wanted to start with, I know Tracy, you did reference and the mayor referenced the different committees and uh, maybe making a distinction between committees and subcommittees. Uh, although you and I, Tracy, have talked about that and haggled over it for an hour or so, maybe, I think you, you do a better job with that. The distinction between the committees, if you wanted to speak to that. Um, I can try to speak to it. I think it still is not totally clear. As you know, Jackie just, Mayor, Mayor Jackie Lieberberg just read the subcommittees and we at the last meeting had assigned um, members of the board who would be focusing on those different um, areas. And I know Michael's, Michael's suggestion was to refer to those um, committees as board committees. Um, so a question is, we have members of our board of trustees assigned to each of these committees. Would there, I guess it's just part of this is a question, is at, we have folks who completed the volunteer forms that are interested in helping in these various areas. So is, um, is that standard protocol that additional volunteers could assist those board members on these areas? I guess that's a question. And I'll say, yeah, I'm somewhat new to being part of a municipal board such as this. So I'm posing some of this as a question. Um, I think the way I look at it, and you're right, um, I use the term board committees. I think uh, because of open public meetings and some of the restrictions that we have to follow, uh, there will be occasions where members of the Board of Trustees break into subgroups of two uh, to try to tackle specific issues like bylaws, like some other things like hiring that we talked about. Then I think there's a separate section in our bylaws um, when they were created for us, talks about an advisory board and committee. So I think that's where people who have uh, the volunteers who have indicated a willingness to participate 
would be involved, and then there would be various committees within that. I could see members of this board, uh, maybe they're each committee having a board of trustee representative on those um, so that there's a continuing dialogue, so there is a connection between the advisory and the or, uh, volunteer segment of it and uh, they're not volunteers, but that segment and the board of trustees. So there's always continuity. Uh, both hands know what the other's doing. So that, that's my distinction in my head uh, and why we made some of these changes. So just for everyone's reference, we're kind of around 4.11 and 5.01. And this was another big item that Michael and I, in reviewing these, wanted to get some further input from the group, is the advisory board. These are interrelated. The advisory board um, is part of the ordinance itself that was passed. So it is referenced here in the bylaws, but the creation of an advisory board um, of seven to 15 members um, is something that's part of the ordinance itself. And the, this advisory board is phrased as encouraging widespread participation. I know one particular thing that we've thought about in reviewing this, that for this advisory board, it will be especially important to have representatives from across the five business districts, commercial districts that are part of the SID. Um, because it so happens, you know, not by design, but by the folks that were selected um, on the committee, numerous of those are located in downtown itself. And we absolutely want to have involvement and a strong voice for all of the commercial areas that are included. So um, this advisory board is mentioned. One thing that we're recommending to change is that while the advisory board does get approved by the township committee that we would like to have our board of trustees be recommending the advisory board members. And once again, we would put a, a broad call out to the community for folks to demonstrate their interest in being a part of that. Um, and so what it sounds like is we have the, if I'm understanding this, I'm gonna ask Michael to jump in. We have the board committees, those have already been um, denoted there would then be an advisory board where some of the folks that have expressed interest in volunteering would in essence become part of this advisory board. And again, though, I do want to just confirm that other volunteers could also be involved. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, so, I don't think we're trying to limit volunteers. Yeah. I think we're trying to um, not dissuade people by making them think, hey, you're going to be on some board. And they may only want to do some small tasks. So yes, we don't exactly. That was my thought. We have people who have also offered up perhaps helping in certain specific areas, right, where they might just want to be part of um, a subcommittee. So I think I would just be in favor of us evolving or revising this language a little further to make it clear that the subcommittees could include could include people beyond those that are officially members of the advisory board and also not to have the limit of five people because on certain areas i mean if there are 10 people that want to be on a business development committee and going out there and trying to attract new businesses why would we want to limit that to five people and i said i've already been hearing from many people who are involved in helping in a lot of these areas so i think we need to evolve that language a little bit um I'll just mention one other thing that, that uh, Michael and I spend time on in 6.02 was adding a little more definition um, around the executive director role. And that's something I know we're gonna talk about um, on our next item. But yeah, any other, are there other questions or other parts of this? Sorry, about the, uh, back to the advisory board. So this is obviously separate to the volunteers, right? So the, it could, maybe some of the people on the advisory committee can also be some of these people that were coming in on the volunteer. And um, in the language, it says, let me go back to it. Um, uh, where are we? Okay, can be recommended by the SID Board of Trustees, which would be us, um, and approved um, by the TC. So does that mean um, they can obviously throw out perhaps somebody that, you know, we may have approved and can the township committee put forward 
um, people for the advisory board. Yeah, I, I think they can, for sure. Yeah. They certainly could vote up or down. On our right, side. I know they can, but, and they then as well then, I guess, for whatever reason, say we want these, I don't know, three, five people on this advisory board. Yeah, I, I think, and I'm speaking for myself, we'll take recommendations or advice from where, wherever it comes. Okay. And, and that is for the first year. I was gonna ask, is that applicable just to the initial advisory board? Yes, correct. And then going yeah. forward, the process is, this board would sort of right. create, okay. Yes, that is true. There is that differentiation about the first year. And that first year meaning now through December 2021. And then right, okay. that's every right. year thereafter. Mm -hmm. So that's true. So the Township Committee would be playing a larger role in this initial right, okay. um, year I, and less so that, after. Um, with regards to the volunteers, I mean, I think any of the subcommittees can ask for volunteers. I don't think those necessarily are related at all to this advisory committee correct is that what you're trying to say earlier um tracy well that's what part of i say what michael and i spent time talking through and i feel like this is still all needs to be refined a little bit because the way it's phrased now is that there's this advisory board and then when you get to 5.04 it talks about that subcommittees could be formed from the advisory board so it does and I think we, we do think that that makes sense for there to be someone heading up a subcommittee who is in some type of ongoing role. However, what this currently, the, the wording currently does not um, speak to, and we are recommending to revise it, I think, in this conversation here, to also talk about the fact that other volunteers beyond people that are part of the advisory board may also volunteer for these subcommittees. Did that make sense? I'm, I'm wondering, okay, so this is a subcommittee of the advisory board or a subcommittee of our board? That's what I'm trying right. to Right, and that's part of what is, that's part of what's confusing. And I'm gonna ask, I'll say how I understand it, but ask Michael to also jump in. So if you look at 4.11. Okay. That talks about board committees. And those board committees are the five committees that we, discussed. that we just mentioned. Then there would be this advisory board of somewhere between seven and 15 members, and there would be subcommittees. And some of those subcommittees, I would think, might align and be very related to the, the board committees. And as it's phrased here, those board committees are not necessarily standing committees, so it might even be a short term committee, that longer term, if this full structure gets up and running, might not be needed anymore, for example. So then the advisory board, um, and as we said, these subcommittees would also each have a member from the board of trustees. Yeah, and I guess we, well, just to say, this structure of the board of trustees and the advisory board is something that is a part of the ordinance itself. And as we said, we did think that the advisory board was a beneficial idea, among other reasons, in order to get input from across the five districts. So we, in our preparation for this and doing this first draft, we did not feel this was the, that it warranted at this point, because we're also new, is let's go with the structure that was proposed in the ordinance and then therefore transferred over to the bylaws, but differentiate a bit with these further subcommittees that would go broader than just members of our committee. Exactly, we wanna have more people involved. And that that could also include volunteers at large to a point that was mentioned earlier. Some people may not be ready to commit to being on a, a 14 month advisory board position, but they might be willing to help on a certain project based on their area of expertise. So I think we still need to work on all the wording because it is a little confusing, but I think that's the concept. Yeah, and I think what we're trying to do, Jumana, is we have a structure that, for lack of a better word, we were born with uh, by way of ordinance and the bylaws, 
and we want to get our basics down before we start tinkering with some of the structural things, I think. Uh, let's get some of our basic elements down, see it grow into what we have, and by living with it, we'll see what works, what can use some help, um, and try to work with the language as best we can so it's understandable. I guess as we, you know, I'm just reading it now, I would opt for simplicity or a little less structure if possible. I understand that the original resolution um, kind of played out an advisory board, which I agree with. The, the whole goal is to um, encourage participation by as many people who want to volunteer and help out. So I'm just thinking the subcommittee, subcommittee reports, appointment of the subcommittee members, maybe that's just too prescriptive in terms of groups or teams of volunteers that will coalesce around certain projects like, you know, the holiday season or parade or whatever, whatever it might be. I'm just, you know, I, I, it's a balance, right? And, and um, I just, if we can simplify it and not try to over prescribe, like who appoints and approves, I know it's important, but it, it still feels like I, I just I love the fact that we got like 15 people expressing interest and I would just want to get them going and organized in a, in a great way. That, that's all. Yeah. So I think it's fair to say we still have some work still have some work to do on the bylaws as we and obviously it's not the only thing we're doing, but it's something we'll do as we're putting everything else together. Uh, we, we did make some other just clarifications just so it's out there on the record uh, in terms of uh, checks and signing checks. Uh, a lot of this was heavy on executive director and the only authority, primary authority to sign in the absence of an executive director. We just wanted to have it that uh, at least two executive officers of the corporation are able to sign. Otherwise, we're hamstrung until we get an executive Chairman, sorry. Uh, just on that note, because that was one thing I was going to bring up is, <clears throat> and this this may just be a suggestion and not something to be written into the bylaws, but <clears throat> if if it makes some sense that uh, when there are expenses of the of the organization that that they are maybe handled in a similar fashion and, and outlined on the, on the agenda, um, just so that it can it can be viewed, um, knowing that you know <clears throat> the executive director or the two two members of the executive board or the board of trustees may make those expenses, but at least they're noted in the, in the agenda. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a bylaw item, but certainly a good practice. That's a good practice. Thank you. Um, anything else we'd like to say about bylaws? Um, so if we have additional comments or, or questions on the bylaws, I, I, I would just like to note that these were posted on the town, on the website um, and um, other materials from tonight's meeting, I think, which is a, which is a great start and sort of making sure that that members who are interested uh, can look at that kind of stuff. And um, but if there are additional uh, questions, uh, is, uh, should they go to you and Tracy? Yes. Okay. bylaws aside for a minute. Um, let's get into some other, uh, some of our core purposes. Uh, the next section, recruitment and human capital, which is a big topic. Thank you. Who wants to speak to that? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Good evening. So to begin, We've, uh, we have posted the director role on uh, three different websites, the League of Municipalities, Downtown New Jersey, and Idealist. We've received eight resumes, three of which we've had discussions with some of those candidates. And we're gonna continue the discussion of, with more candidates as they come in. Um, we're, it's a asset gathering process uh, we're engaged, and uh, I think we are looking for somebody that's going to really, uh, for excellence and exceptionalism and all the things that we'd like to see that this individual encompasses in their previous uh, work, his work history, their skill set, their business acumen, and their experience with downtowns, and, um, and really um, take on a very significant leadership role. Uh, in, in the in the organization so 
we are, we're going to continue to uh, call and, uh, and, and be active in, in, in the engagement process of new candidates um, as, we, as we launch. Additionally, through the process, we've identified an individual who we've all met with, um, in addition, the TC members, uh, Diane Eglow and, and uh, Cheryl Burstein had a Zoom call with her as well. And we'd like to move forward with her candidacy on an interim consulting basis just to address the, this social media, this uh, engagement. We've got the Halloween is upon us. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is to um, bring a motion. Alex has a, a bring a motion. Yeah. To move forward with the candidacy of Marla Itzkin for about 20 hours per week to really help us launch our communications, our marketing, uh, our social media. Um, she's coming from a, uh, a background as a former director of marketing and communications at the, at the Westfield area Y. She's uh, been involved in a number of initiatives and website development and program launches. And uh, we all feel that she would be a, um, a very viable addition as we um, launch our, our entity. So um, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to move ahead with the hiring of Marla Itzkin as a, on a consulting basis for about 20 hours per week for the foreseeable future as we um, engage our, our merchants, our public, um, and move forward uh, in, in that direction. Mayor, I would just state the hourly amount that you anticipate. Uh, well. The hourly amount is $25 per hour. And since there's a motion, I'll... I'll uh... I'll move it. Second. Tracy, may we have a roll call, please? Yeah. Jumana? Yes. Myself, Tracy, yes. Mayor Lieberberg? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Nadej? Yes. Michael? Yes. Yes. Steven? Yes. Just a the motion comment as much as it's a question. Uh, to be clear, Marla is not a township. She won't be a township employee. She'll be a contract employee, correct? Correct. She will be housed in the township and she will be working remotely. So when she's in Milburn, she'll, Alex, the town hall is kind enough to provide her with um, a desk. I'm pretty sure. And, uh, and, and, a, and, and, a, and a laptop, and a computer, a desktop. <laughs> That's, I think, I think that's, that's the official name. Just, just wait. <laughs> Hang around. <laughs> Hang around. There's more. You're way ahead. Um, <laughs> uh, I had a chance. I know uh, Andrew and I had a chance to get on the phone with Marla and, and the rest of you have. And she, uh, she was very impressive and looking forward to having a good start. When did she start? Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully soon. Yes, very soon. Uh, any other discussion on recruitment and human capital? If not, uh, short-term planning. I think that's to Nadej and Jumana. Nadej, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Um, I'm, uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I mean, obviously the immediate short term is Halloween. So uh, Nadej and I have been uh, meeting and talking and discussing some ideas, um, not that dissimilar from what has been done in Milburn um, in the past for Halloween. Um, and we're thinking of doing the event on Friday, um, October 30th, um, between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m. Uh, I think in the past it was like a preschool only um, kind of trick or treating thing, and I don't know that that's still open to possibilities. If we want to do a, an earlier part of that day component for the younger for the younger kids, um, and so we talked to I mean I talked to Milburn Florist about setting up 
kind of like um, a selfie sort of booth sort of situation in the courtyard behind Starbucks where you can kind of sit down the kids can, you know, take pictures amongst pumpkin and scarecrows and hay stacks and what have you. And then um, the next part of the um, planning, and we really don't have that much time, obviously, is to reach out to um, merchants and restaurants and and try to you know see if we can get a buy-in from everybody to um, participate in some in some way. We talked about doing um, a goodie bag, so if we can solicit from merchants, if they so choose to put something into the goodie bag, it could just be a coupon or it could be um, you know free iced tea from the deli. Andrew, I don't know, and <laughs> anything um, you know something like that and that nature that we're going to have uh, goodie bags and they will be on a first come first serve basis. And I. Don't know if we can do this, and I don't know who would, could answer to this, but maybe it would be something like if you have, you know, show receipts uh, that you've shopped in some of the five districts of uh, Melbourne and Short Hills, um, you know, then you can come and redeem your goodie bag. Or, you know, am I correct in saying is that one of the things that we've discussed, Jackie? I think I think that's certainly an option, but it. Um... If we, I, 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 Anyone can come and get that. Yes, could just come get your picture taken and and uh, you know, and you know I, for a three hour period I'm hoping there'll there'll be a couple of hundred kids through that yeah. in with social distancing through that time. Right. And um, and, and I was hoping that um, we would have an engagement and buy in from the merchants if they wanted, like you said, Andrew, a free iced tea or whatever it is. You could buy a sandwich. <laughs> not, that not, gonna be. not committed to that, Andrew. It could be a whole, like, you know, gobbler sandwich. I mean, whatever. <laughs> but, um, and then, anyhow, I, I, and we're still brainstorming, but we want to be able to include, you know, the, all the districts in some capacity. So this is where we need to, you know, really kind of get our boots on the ground and reach out to, um, you know, all these businesses in all the districts. This kind of goes back to, I think what Vicki mentioned earlier is working on this directory. I think, I mean, I know this isn't part of the ho um, Halloween thing, but it is part of the short-term planning where we want to get this directory up and going as soon as possible. Um, and then, um, back to, we also want to encourage um, the participants to shop, right? And, and to not just come and get some, you know, candy from each store or restaurant. So that, I think maybe I was trying to get to a concept where if you, um, you know, show receipts, then you can kind of enter them into some kind of raffle where we might have gift, gift ba baskets, maybe two or three gift baskets randomly drawn or something like that. I don't know. That's kind of what we're thinking about. I'm working on a poster that we will distribute to all the uh, merchants who want to participate. Um, and then obviously social media blast out on all me you know social media channels. Every participant uh, participating merchant should also blast out to their you know uh, followers on Facebook, you know TikTok. I don't know whatever people are using, and um, all that kind of good stuff. I don't know. Did I miss anything, Nadesh? Mata, just a clarification question. So does this still include a component of kids doing trick-or-treating at stores? And is that okay in the current I mean, that's, I, as far as right time. now, it is okay. And yes, it is. Um, I was planning on including that if, again, if merchants want to participate. I mean, again, I think like it's, I don't know what the rules are with COVID, but I know that I've had candy in my store for the last couple of weeks and people are helping themselves to it. So, I mean, obviously wrapped candy. So um, if there were some safety protocols that we should all follow, I think that would be important to know too. I don't know what, what the rules we, are. We can certainly help with that. I mean, we have, we have guidance on the website, you know, okay. really it's about active participation, and having one person handed out and things like that. I think that that provides the safety in that. Um, so you don't have kids grabbing into a bowl and stuff. Yes. I we, we can help with that. Okay, great, perfect. I would like to see us, I think this was talked about at some point, us, the SID, um, you know, for, perhaps for businesses that sign up to be a part of this, you know, the first 50 businesses to sign up will give, you know, will help supply them with some candy or some kind of benefit. We did talk about that as well, that we could actually help um, with the businesses. You're, um, you're correct that we would provide them with the candy, um, you know. Or some supply. Some supply. Yes. Not like, you know, an unlimited supply, yeah. maybe, like you said, a free bag of, um, you know, Great. 
and I was also going to maybe encourage as much as possible for the candy to be as safe as possible, like to try to keep it nut free and et cetera, whatever, but those kind of things. But that's what we've discussed so far. Um, I don't know if anybody has any other thoughts or ideas to throw in the mix. We have, have a question, Jumana. Um, yeah. Just the timing of a three to uh, yeah. six. Um, yeah. Can you hear me? I can the hear you. The timing of a three to six. I know in, I live in Glenwood area and the kids start trick or treating there yeah, like at four o'clock. This is the day before, sorry, Friday, October 30th. Correct. Okay. okay, it's Friday. That's right. Friday. Never mind. So, so I, I think part of the thought process was that it won't compete with anybody's other Halloween. Uh, actually, yeah. even after school, um, even though school is virtual for, for, for most, so that, that makes sense. Okay, thank and you. And it won't Sorry. compete, so it can, it, yeah. Got it. Thanks. Yep. Javada, just a question. Um, yeah. We we're talking about getting the word out, and yeah. you said about a, having a poster. Is I think it's important that we have a uniform message that yeah. goes out on all different channels, however that may be. Is that something we'll have? Uh, it, what's the date we'll have something? So we can I mean, I've, I've already worked on the poster and I could circulate it to the whole committee. Um, and, um, you know, last year we kind of did this on an ad hoc basis, I think, Nadej and I, and we, um, I printed the posters uh, myself and Nadej distributed them to all the merchants who wanted to participate. Um, so that part we kind of, you know, anyhow, um, but so, but in the meantime, I've been working on something. I could send it out to the group because, yeah, I agree, messaging should be uniform, and I want, you know, make sure that we're not, you know, we're clear about the safety protocols as well, you know, social distancing, and that the merchant will be handing out the candy. Correct, Alex? Yeah, I, I, again, we could provide you with the, with the sheet that we received from the state and, and that we'd also have posted on our website. Great, yeah. Somebody has Can you repeat the question? Hard to hear. You mentioned something about preschool trick or treating. Three to six. It's anyone can come to Milburn to trick or treat. Correct. You, I mean, do you think it's better that we restrict the put an age limit on it? I mean, I'm a little confused that it's anybody can come, or, and then everyone goes to the courtyard. I'm a little. No, that the courtyard is not everybody goes to it. It's just going to be set up and um, as a kind of like a little, um, I don't know what you're going to call it, like a little benefit, something that um, we're just, you know, throwing in to make it a little more festive. And um, Melbourne Florist graciously offered to um, volunteer to set that up. But what do you mean by anybody? Yeah, I mean, anybody can walk downtown at any time. So, and trick or treat or come in your store. It's, it's you know, you're inviting potentially a ton of amount of kids. And, you know, some stores are narrow, some stores that might not want kids running in and out of their store. I know from the past when we did the preschool trick-or-treating, it was a couple kids with the mothers, and, you know, they would just walk. I just don't understand what you're saying. I think it's obviously it's for participating mer merchants. Um, you have to maintain social distancing. You have to maintain the number of people in your store based on what, uh, what you know, the state regulations are. You can't let a certain number of you know, I think all those measures have to be in place. Can I, can I maybe just make, make a suggestion if it makes sense? And I, and I'm not, is, is, can, can it, can, can you put it that they, the kids have to be accompanied by an adult? I mean, yeah. that, that yeah. kind of captures the age group plus you get a potential shopper. I know. I agree. Definitely. We, we did talk about that as well, but I mean, the reality, my point is reality is you can't stop anybody from going shopping down Milburn Ave or Upper Milburn or, you know, whatever that, but yes, of course we can see, um, you know, must be accompanied by an adult. I would think we might want to give an age range, you know, to say. One suggestion, just so we're not all shouting over each other. So I, I can see it's, we're starting to get into that. Okay. Why don't, why don't we maybe, you Vicky I'm sorry I don't know your last name okay I think what we need to do is get this in writing make sure everybody has it um, okay I want to talk after the meeting just no, I don't have, listen, yeah. I'm for events. no I, 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 I didn't I don't think, I think you're not great idea this is a big change from what we've done in the past so I just want to just you know just kind of fine-tune it with this mm -hmm. you know I know Mick we used to have Halloween and I see pictures of wrong the people I know that's not going to happen, right. but 
but I just want a little bit of guidance to say that if you're not saying, you know, we want to, if, if the idea when we do to do preschool church training the past is the parents can't go. So the parents got to see the stores and the, and the restaurants and what the children right. had to walk. So if you're having older kids that don't need parents to walk down with them, what's the point, you know, you know, it's a great community. Event. No, I mean, that's a good point, Vicki. I, 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 I totally understand what you're trying to say. Right, but you want to have shoppers there too. But I want potential people to say, oh, you moved across the street. Oh, I let me come back next time. Oh, the deli's down there, you know, they're doing they have three spots. You know, Jermana's down, you know, it's it's better instead of smorgasbord of kids of all ages. No, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I take your point and I, I yeah, we did definitely discuss those um as well. Okay. So and and, the and then I'll circulate the post idea of having this gift bag at the uh, at the school for kids. Now there, there you're going to have an, an adult, you know, theoretically with yes, children. That's right. Kids. Thank you. For, yes, so, yes. And that is going to, uh, uh, you know, while supplies last, you know, goodie bag. Maybe you, you have to give somebody a, you know, a, you know, put a pumpkin stamp on their hand so we know that everyone. Because that, that, you know, Nadez is talking about putting a book in there. One restaurant was talking about a $10 gift card in there. So we just have to make sure that, that we share as much of our uh, bounty, if you will, as, as um, um, Yeah, so I think we can, we can certainly continue the discussion to, uh, to fine tune it. And fine tune also it, for sure. Have, yeah. Yeah. We have Marla's assistance, hopefully, as a boots on the ground, engaging merchants. This could evolve a little bit, too, um, through the process. So. Okay. Great. Did anyone want to say anything else about Halloween planning? I know we have some other things to discuss under this short-term planning. Uh, wanted to move on to the next item on the agenda is workshops. Do you want me to talk about that too, or Nadesh? <laughs> um, we're trying to um, work on, again, trying to get a few um, sort of uh, webinars to, to our merchants and business owners um, that would be a free of um, charge to them. Um, I've talked to a social media person who, um, this is all, again, we're just discussing options, but um, where she could help merchants, uh, well, have a discussion on social media in the age of COVID and, you know, tips and things like that and how we can help uh, merchants. So we talked about maybe doing something like that. Um, I, I don't know if those type of things have to be approved. And in the case, there's some that Nadesha found that were for free. The one that um, I was recommending is uh, approximately, I want to say 200 or $250. Um, but I've gone to a bunch of her events. She speaks at the Coco and she's um, done a lot of events in Short Hills. She is a former Short Hills resident, actually. Um, and, you know, so I, I don't know what the protocol for those type of things are. I don't know if we, you know, I'm assuming it has to be um, approved. And I don't know. I'm not really sure. I would love, Jumana, thank you. I would love for us to clarify because given that we're basically meeting once a month. I know that businesses, as we heard from Vicki and we've heard from others, are really ready for us to start doing things. So for example, I think the social media workshop sounds great. $250 is well within our budget. So should we make a motion to approve that tonight? I'd love to see us getting something out there in the next month. Good idea. Great. So we have a motion to approve an expenditure of what, $250? $250. Or, uh, and what's it called? Just so we can. So her name is uh, my. Um, the name of her company is called My Friend Betty. Her name is Betty Galvin, and she runs like a social media um, group. Basically. Expenditure of two hundred fifty dollars for Betty Galvin's well, organization. That would also be a great draw to get a, the, the uh, businesses to sign up. Uh, exactly. We'll get their email list yeah. with the anticipation that they get to enroll in this seminar. Now, is it, uh, is it like a Zoom seminar and how does it work? Yes, it will be obviously because of, you know, the situation. 
it will be via Zoom. And I've actually attended both in person and her Zoom events and they're great, they're very engaging and she gives really good concrete um, tips and ideas. Yeah, I wanna mention, I know Jumana and I spoke about this. We have a member of our community who works for Facebook who oh, right. is able to offer, um, and this is something actually I previously had communicated during the beginning of the pandemic in an informal way, but I confirmed with her that she is, continues to be able to offer some free Facebook advertising, um, Facebook and Instagram advertising um, for some of our local businesses. And so we, and there is no cost to us for that. And we can connect that would be wonderful. You know, sometimes it's great to go to workshops, but then what? So it's really great that people can then have this opportunity to take advantage of that as well. So we can just hook her in to do we, a little bit. Before we lose it, we have a motion to approve that expenditure. Uh, yes. Can, can I have a motion to approve that? I'm sorry, can I just, I'm not clear who's taking the course. We're taking the course, we're paying for someone. We're going to pay for her, right? And she, we're going to pay her for her course. I would, and then it's going to be open to whoever wants to do it. So any merchant, not us personally, but anybody who, um, anybody in the five districts. Um, any, uh, uh, so we, we would pay one fee and any merchant in any of the districts could. Exactly, could sign up for this webinar. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so what we. Anybody want to move that? Yes. So moved. Uh, second. 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 Okay. Now let's just take a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, I just wanted to get that tidied up. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. We also have um, in those workshops, um, there is a, a lady from town who works for the WCEN, uh, which is the Women's Center for Entrepreneurship, and they put um, free webinars uh, several times uh, a week. Uh, some of them, I had a look at the list, are very relevant. For example, uh, one comes to mind that they, they repeat regularly, which is about the PPP protection, uh, and we can, um, we, anyone can register, and I would like to circulate that to merchants as well. They can dis elect to choose whatever is relevant to them and participate, and um, it's, it's a great resource. Great. Well, this will be all part of this uh, merchant engagement initiative where, you know, we're giving to get, so to speak. Um, Correct. We're up and running, and we're... We have their back and then we're going to do give them the tools to support their growth of their business i think everybody has so many good ideas uh, the one thing i would just say for all of us let's make sure we keep everybody in the loop so if somebody wants to participate with somebody else and maybe make a visit or do just be aware generally aware of what's going on just let's make sure we have we just broadcast that to each other so everybody is on the same page. And we're not duplicating or uh, efforts are being redundant what we're putting our precious time into. To that end, how are we going to let people know about this webinar? We have an email list we're going to send out or? That was, I think, going back to what, we, yeah, we're trying. I can talk about that a little bit when we get to the next marketing topic because that's a big part of it. Is there anything else we want to talk about under short-term planning? Before we yes. Um, in other, um, I want to talk about the, this um, booklet that we are trying to put together for um, new potential businesses in town, as well as, I suppose, existing businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we've met with Alex. We um, have... Um, um, we've discussed ideas of what to put in this booklet. Uh, the creation of a video to make it very uh, interactive and work with the Department of Buildings in order to give people a complete, um, you know, like bullet point, this is what you do if you want to establish here. We even talked about giving information about um, properties that are available. So we're working on this. Great. Yeah, and this, this just to piggyback on that a little bit, this piggybacks a little bit on, you know, um, Morristown has a very nice document um, that they've, they've put together, uh, which I think is important to, uh, and, and, and also, you know, I think people tend to accept 
um, instruction and understanding through video a little bit more. And it would be nice to, to show some faces, even make it kind of like a welcome video um, for, you know, whether you've been here or whether, you know, Oh, you're coming in, make it a welcome video and use that as an introduction to some of the board of trustees or, or some of the merchants in town. And then st step through some uh, particular points about the building department or zoning uh, that are important to know and just, you know, good tips. So it's not so much a newcomer's guide, it's a guide to, it's a, just a current guide. Well, I, think it, I think it's both. Yeah, I think it's both. It's, it's certainly catering more toward the way that Nadej and I spoke about is more catering toward the new people um, because existing businesses, unless you're doing something, you know, pretty, pretty large in terms of build out or whatever, um, it's going to impact n new businesses. And it's, and it's always, a, it's, you know, it's different in every town. I'm sure, you know, Andrew just went through this in terms of when he was, in, you know, doing things in Milburn and doing things in Morristown are, 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 are way different. I don't want to hear how much better they are, but I just, you know. I do have a question about the audience though for that guide, right? So one one is new businesses and trying to help them through the process. And the other one, I guess I'm thinking of but just a business directory for consumers, for customers. So I'm, I, don't, I don't know if you're that, thinking- I think that's well, more of like what Tracy's gonna talk about in terms oh, of so directory nice. and contact okay. listings. Gotcha. The system. No. But okay. it could also be used for prospecting new businesses. Correct. Right, okay. We have anything uh, that that was that's, not, that, that's it on short term planning. Tracy, did you want to do something on short term planning or into marketing? Tracy, you're Tracy. you're on. Oh, I'm good. Are we moving to marketing? Yep, I'm good for that. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yes, agree and following up on some of the great questions earlier. We all completely agree that this is a big priority. Um, so a couple of things on this front. We, we've spent a chunk of time, um, and I've been working with Jumana on some of this. First of all, looking at other communities and SIDS within New York, New Jersey, but also like looking around the country at how they're marketed, how they're positioned, what their website URLs are, what their taglines are. So we have a working name that I think we're pretty uh, pretty clear on moving ahead on, which is Explore Milburn Short Hills, meant to appeal to both residents as well as visitors to town. We want to um, combine that with a tagline, something that's unique that we could really own in terms of Milburn Short Hills. Um, and that's something we're still thinking through different ideas on. Um, Jumana is working on logo development, um, something that combines the heritage of Milburn Short Hills with our robust business businesses. Um, so that is in the works, and um, we are we're very excited for the marketing consultant for Marla. Has a lot of experience. You know, I was excited in meeting with her. She has a lot of experience in these areas, so I know that she will be able to help us solidify um, some of these plans. So. Some of those first priorities working with her will be to officially set up a website and that can be done amazingly quickly. I mean, I work in marketing and my professional job and it's really amazing how quick one can get a website up and going. And we would envision that the directory to businesses will be primarily online at this point. I mean, perhaps we could do a printed version at some point, but it'll certainly be pretty quick to get something up online launching social media, a Facebook page, an Instagram page. And just by the way, once we solidify our URL, we will have email addresses and all of that, I think will be just a lot more fluid. Also now that our organization was officially approved and we have our EIN number. Um, I, I envision in the next month, we will make a lot of progress on these fronts. Just one other piece that we've also talked about um, on the marketing front is, also some type of element possibly using the mill wheel graphics that somehow incorporates the five business districts. Um, and so that's just another element we've been thinking about. And then the other exciting news is um, we have an intern that's working with the township that is helping on the list compilation and has already started um, going out there and helping to fill in the blanks 
um, throughout the SID districts in terms of the contact information for the property owners and the businesses at those addresses. We also have um, a legacy list from the DMDA as it stood in 2018. So obviously it's, some of it is outdated, but it is a starting point. Um, and we also have a sign up form out there on the township website that we've also pushed out through social media. So we're getting a bunch of new signups. And as we said earlier, if we do the workshop for Halloween sign up, all of these opportunities are gonna enable us to build that database so that we have a complete and up-to-date database of the property owners and the businesses at each address that's within um, the SID district. So thoughts, questions, Jumana, we've been touching base on some of this. Any, did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. I just, yeah. just in regards to like, we're still kind of nailing down the benefit statement or, you know, I think, you know, like tagline or whatever you want to call it. And logo, we're ready to move, but I would love to see Marla's input um, on some of that. And then maybe we can kind of fine tune it and circulate it, I guess, via email to the board. Would that make sense to everybody? Okay, yeah. But as, until we have um, the name and um, I suppose the tagline is, is important, but if we can start functioning without it, oh, we, but we need the name. So we, I think the name, should that be voted on? Do we need to, do we need to approve it? Because that way I can put it on the poster at the very least and, you know. Everybody approves of, uh, if anybody wants to make a motion to approve next door, move our sugar hills. Okay, so the motion would be to utilize the name Explore Milburn Short Hills. So I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's right. Kind of the doing business as. So at least we can start with right. communicating. And then, we'll, and then as we enhance and uh, refine uh, as we move along, um, that we have that URL. Yeah, the, so. yeah, we've already reserved the URL, um, dot .com and dot, uh, .org, because we're a nonprofit. So yeah, and I think Tracy had brought this up as well, and and is I think an important aspect of this. You know, starting a website can be pretty easy through you know uh, Wix or something like that. But um, also having the email addresses sort of associated with that, so that you know everything about the organization sort of speaks to that name. Then um, and and we're not sort of everything's kind of in one place. So um, again, I know uh, Marla will probably be very helpful in that, and we certainly can. We, we can certainly help uh, to, to a certain degree on, on, on the IT side of that type of stuff. So, so, so uh, I would defer to Marla to talk about the merchants. Is it, is it a .org or a .com? Is, it better? is there a better? Now, why don't we, it's a little hard to hear. I'm sorry if I'm talking over with someone. I said, I would like us to consult with Marla because we, I think we also had a few different possible iterations so I think we yeah, need to yeah, finalize yeah. what would be the best. Yeah, we actually have options, right? Explore m, uh, msh.com or .org as well for shorter, you know, easier searches. But um, you're right, we, we have a few options. That would work. But I'm just, for the, for the purpose of Jumana's poster, it'll just, it'll just say Explore Melbourne Short Hills. Yes, I think they're talking about the URL, the different iterations for the URL. But I think the name is we're set at Explore Melbourne Short Hills. Yes, yes. yes. Right. Agreed. Yeah. Anything else uh, to add on marketing? I think that was pretty good, pretty comprehensive. Anybody else with any questions or comments on it? If not, we'll move on to the next item business development and advocacy. there as a request from somebody. Um, well, is it that sort of what Nadej yeah, is, that's think, really what Nadej and Alex are, uh, have, have already shared. Yeah, I think this was identified to be our fifth committee and it was gonna be Mayor Lieberberg and Richard Wasserman. Yeah. 
And I think that's something that'll be more starting as a future step. And the first step being what Nadej is working on. Uh, next, we have Chamber of Commerce, Commerce Information and Request. Yeah. Can I just clarify that? I think we had mentioned for Mayor Lieberberg had a conversation um, with Grace Ann, who is the executive director now at the chamber, that it would be helpful, um, Mayor Lieberberg, to just give us a, little, a brief overview of the chamber and just kind of what their roles are, how we might interface. And there was also a direct request um, that I think went to Alex about possible SID sponsorship of winter walks. So two different parts, but maybe we could start with just a little overview for our reference of the chamber and all of that. So the chamber is a for-profit entity uh, that, that was uh, rather robust before COVID and is now operating under the uh, leadership of Grace Ann Bissick. And, uh, they are, they are, their, their motivation is to try to engage new businesses. It is a fee-based, my understanding, it is a fee-based membership program. You, you may, as merchants, you may be able to uh, speak a little bit more succinctly uh, to the, to the, um, to the and, and the mission is to, is, is to help business advocacy. They run special programming, they run events, they're the ones that uh, were sponsoring the, uh, the street fair, the winter walk. They have monthly breakfast meetings where they um, that are uh, networking opportunities for um, for existing businesses and new businesses to engage uh, other to engage other businesses and operate in a. Uh, uh, what I would define as a, you know, a, a networking a networking breakfast. So the hairdresser knows the insurance broker, um, knows the, uh, the the lawyer, the uh, the accountant, um, professional services. Um, so that's 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 a reader's digest version of the history of the chamber. I've been engaged in the chamber in a couple of new businesses that have opened. They've done the ribbon cuttings and we've worked together on those events. Um, would you like to well, was there a specific request from, or just kind of a, from, from the chamber? I know, I, I know they had reached, they had reached out to me and they had asked that I bring up uh, the, uh, the question of whether the SID had any interest in and and sponsoring um in any form or dollar amount uh, the winter walk uh, which they are planning on doing um from my understanding and while it might be a limited uh and or um sort of a bridged version of years past but they do plan on doing it can i say i feel i mean i've had some informal interactions with Grace Ann, and I mean, clearly we're complementary types of organizations, though, right, one is, a for, happens to be a for-profit, um, but it does seem like there could be some synergies. Yeah, I personally don't feel like we know enough about Winter Walk to know would we want to sponsor, aka give some funds towards, and we have very limited funds, but I'm feeling like it would be, That's perhaps it would be helpful for one of our board members to have a more comprehensive conversation with Grace Dan? I don't know. Yeah, That's my I'd thought. I'd be happy to do that. I don't okay. know her, but I'm sure I can meet her. Okay. Yeah. I, I have, her, I have her contact information. I can make that Thank you. But I do agree um, that they, we are complementary, it seems like. So there, there's no, re we should be working to um, develop relationships and co-sponsoring things as, as appropriate. So I, I, I think that does, I don't see why we wouldn't, right? We really have the same goals. I personally think it could be a gesture of goodwill too, if we did, I mean, I don't know what the sponsorship levels are for the winter walk. Um, I do remember I did sponsor, I did sponsor at some level last year as a business owner, but it might also be, you know, the people get to know who we are a little bit too. A lot of people did attend the winter walk last year. 
Well, I can meet. I can meet with uh, Grace Ann, and we'll. I'll get some more information. Bring it back to everybody. Uh, I do think Tracy brought up a good point, especially at this part of the year, where uh, light on funds and we, we have a lot of yeah, startup costs. So we have to be a little judicious in how we spend money. Agreed. Not that we don't want to, and not that we want to keep it away. And I think the point that we are complimentary and should be sponsored by this is important. But I can get more information on that. Yeah, I hear Jumana's point, though. I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to say that we should. No, no, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I do totally agree in both. It's things. a good point, but yeah, we should just find out more about it or see is there some way we could add value. Exactly. You know, again, anything that's good for Milburn Short Hills is good for all of us, and we want to be a part of it. But yeah, I was a little nervous about the money. Yes, I totally agree with that. <laughs> Can whoever's speaking through the microphone, because I can't hear anything. So anyone can join the Milburn Short Hills Chamber of Commerce. So it's just not limited to Milburn Short Hills re uh, businesses. So I just, when we do do um, work together, we have to be cognizant of that because, you know, I don't want to, you know, because I don't know what their, what, when they do it, when they have their members, if they have events, then any of their members can come to their events. So if it's, you know, Harry has an eyeglass place here and the summit guy is the eyeglass place and he can come here too if it's a chambered sponsored event. So you just got to watch the synergy between the two. That's just my two cents. Okay. Uh, the next item is advisory. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Andrew, did you want to add something about the chamber? No, I just, I couldn't, I wanted, I can't hear the comments. So I was, yeah, that's fine. Uh, all right, uh, next item is advisory council. I know it's something we talked about. Is there anything else we wanted to discuss on advisory council? We covered a lot during our bylaws discussion. Uh, just quickly, I, 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 to be honest with you, I'm still a little bit fuzzy on advisory board. And, <laughs> but I, uh, what, I was wondering if we would want to think about at some point inviting um, some members of the environmental commission to help with or suggest different things in the downtown and business districts in in the frame of like environmental, I don't know, certain plans. I just, I know that there's a, a, a large group of people in the community that are very focused on that sort of thing. If we had maybe some of those folks who could give us, you know, I, 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 I'm going to just like, I don't know if there's like a certain type of paint or certain types of plantings or things that they can do for the businesses that are more environmentally friendly, something. I just wasn't sure where to bring that up and this seemed like the place to bring it up. That's actually a good point. They've actually reached out to me uh, a couple times. I haven't been able to meet with anybody, but they have come into my store a few times and have wanted to get involved with the SID. So that I think the advisory board is probably yeah. the place. That's a good idea. And maybe we could do something uh, to your point, Andrew, if there's something specific we could add it as a topic of discussion on our agenda. Have somebody come in, or some people come in, speak to uh, great idea. environmental concerns that are relevant to, to our organization. And then, uh, once we have our website up, we can put some information up and continue from there. At least something to kick it off. That's, that's a good idea. I'm I'm happy to reach out to the chair of the environmental commission uh, and let her know what our thoughts are and. I could invite her to come to the, her representative to come to the November 17th meeting. Great. I have a quick question about that. Are they, the Environmental Commission is separate from the green team or are they the same? They're separate. Separate. Or what's the green team? <laughs> so <clears throat> the Environmental Commission is a group of appointed uh, volunteers oh, that, that work towards environmental issues in the township. Okay. Uh, the green team are actually two volunteers uh, that sort of have volunteers around them helping out with initiatives to um, keep um, Milburn a sustainable community. Um, and again, much like, <clears throat> excuse me, the chamber and this group, there, there are synergies, synergies and there are differences, um, but, but generally uh, the green team works on our a sustainable Jersey application, which includes certain actions and like the whole um, uh, green, um, takeout products that was done last year was the green team 
um, and that helped towards, and they received a grant from Sustainable Jersey and were able to, um, you know, kind of pilot that program in a few areas. Um, so, but I think, I think they're both, they both have value in terms of, uh, you know, speaking to the, to the businesses and giving some ideas. And I know they're always looking for opportunities to educate and that helps them towards those, those types of initiatives as well. And will benefit everybody, them and, and the businesses. So this is a point of clarification. It was a green team that reached out to me then. Um, we've been trying to set up a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. They have a commercial program right now that they're, that they're working toward, um, in terms of, uh, energy efficiency, I believe. So, uh, good again, maybe another opportunity for, and it's only for commercial properties. That's a, same, same idea though. We could inter, interface with both of them, see what, uh, maybe okay. a topic that's relevant for our meeting and have some discussion about it. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, we're on to board comments. Anybody has any additional comments or concerns? Um, I know we have some work to do. We'll all get be speaking to each other during the week, I'm sure. Uh, announcements. I think somebody pre-announced our next meeting would be November 17th. So that's, <laughs> I would have forgotten. So thank you. Uh, be November 17th, 7 p.m. in this room, I presume, unless uh, I did something else. Uh, we also have, uh, as was mentioned earlier, Friday, October 30th, between 3 and 6 p.m., we'll be um, running a Halloween event, and uh, more to come on that this week. Does anybody else have any announcements or anything else that they'd like to get here? Not an announcement, but just something that came up in a discussion with a candidate um, for the uh, director. Are we allowed as an organization to fundraise? Yes. Yeah, we're a nonprofit. We can, we can do so, uh, getting way ahead of myself, but theoretically, at some point, if we had somebody who was like a you know amazing fundraiser, we could be a self-funded organization. Yeah, I think you're looking at fundraising, grant writing, all things like that that you know, help balance and really sustain the organization. Yeah. All right, That's cool. my idea. Somebody who can do both yeah. of those things too. Yeah, I would support that. I mean, we're, it's premature right now. I think we need to get our executive director in place, but I think it is something we should work toward is, is a fundraising because they're tax deductible contributions to a nonprofit and then some sort of grant program. We have to figure out criteria, but grants to support businesses, you know. Um, there are lots of precedents. I think Madison had a very successful one um, during the height of COVID in the spring. Livingston also uh, gave anywhere between, I think, $1,500 and $2,000 to each of their businesses um, during COVID just to kind of uh, help them with their, with, their, with their business expenses. So, yes. Um, I, mean, I think that's, I think that's, yeah, something that in terms of exactly, because I think you're talking about somewhat se separate things, but, but certainly the group would have to come come together on how you would use those donations. That's a good idea. Any other miscellaneous comments, announcements? Pretty good of the order. Um, and with that, I guess we can take a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Meeting is adjourned. We'll see you on the 17th, but we'll certainly see you before that. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Night. Night.